I have my truck here on display at the CBI off-road booth and Overland Truck Store booth and the guys at Factor 55 came up and they noticed this hook and I guess it, it disgusted them because they they have decided to come over and do a demonstration on how to splice a winch line onto a new hook and so we're going to be installing their fair lead um, and the Factor, Factor 55 flat hook which is supposedly the world's safest winch hook and uh, they're going to be doing a lot of talking about what what the science is behind this and why it's a huge advantage and so I thought maybe you guys might be interested since they're gonna do it I'm gonna film it and make a video for you guys because uh, they have a cool tool that allows you to be able to do this repair on the road so if you were to snap a winch line or something uh, they have a tool that can show you how to do it so I'm pretty interested I like ropes and things you guys know I was a firefighter I did high angle rescue that kind of stuff those sorts of training I didn't actually do it in the field but I did training and uh, I just find it really interesting so we're gonna watch these guys uh, patch this thing up and make it cool. <laughs> so this Smittybilt Fairly Link is made out of aluminum and you can see that this steel hook comes up in here and it chews this up and then as we run our winch line over it it's starting to fray the winch line. This winch line's actually really new. This whole winch is really new. Um, so that's already a disadvantage of having this steel hook up against this um, aluminum fairlead. It's just really notching it out really bad already. But dude, I mean, look at like that burr right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this like, is fairly winch... new and it's already burred out. And it's... Yeah, so if you, if you can imagine your winch rope is grabbing on top of that, it's just tearing through this, which could lead to the rope failing early, right? And so that's why it's so valuable to move into doing that. Are you shooting it right now? Okay, I just wanna make sure. So like, the thing is, is when you look at, when you look at the difference for what happens here uh, between the fair leads, like, so this is a cast aluminum, so it's really soft. And because mm -hmm. it's really soft, it starts to deteriorate in here. And so you can see with like metal, I mean, it, 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 when you touch it, you can just see just how just a simple little hit right there starts yep. to damage into that surface. So all that's doing is leading to tearing apart all those fibers in between there. And then when that's under heavy load and dragging that heat and the friction going off the area, um, you know, I want to be careful just to make sure I don't cut my fingers, right? It's been light use and look how screwed up that already looks, yeah. right? So with our fair leads, uh, they're uh, mil-spec type 3 hard anodized. Um, they're machined out of USA made Kaiser billet uh, 6061 aluminum alloy. Um, they only come in this gunmetal gray color because when you take 6061 aluminum alloy and you hard anodize it, it actually, the end result turns it into this color. And it's actually two mils thick. So a mil gets infused into the material itself and then there's a mil thickness on the surface. So it makes the surface as hard as sapphire. So then when you do get grit or dirt in the winch rope, it's not gonna scratch the fair lead surface so it's gonna allow this larger, like look, you can see this flat spot that's here, mm -hmm. right? So you have this larger outer fillet radius to dissipate the heat and the friction as your rope is pulling in, no matter what angle you're pulling in, you have a smooth transition to guide your rope back onto the drum as you're pulling in. This will be a huge upgrade to that. Awesome. Now when we upgrade, as we get into showing you how to put on um, uh, our ultra hook product, you'll see how those winch line shackle mounts have integrated rubber pads. So once that lays flush and flat there, there'll be no metal to metal connection here. So that way there's no vibrations, no noise and protect the fair lead surface until you're ready to pull the winch line out and use it in a recovery scenario, whether for yourself or somebody else. Like we go, you're going? We're going, okay. yeah, we're live. And Action. So now what we're gonna do, Smitty Built does this thing where, um, and some other winch manufacturers do this too, where this is a permanent eye hook that's on here. So so the only way to get this off is either you got to put this in a bench vise and cut that twice to get access to this thimble that's on there, or you have to re-splice the winch rope. Now, re-splicing your rope is very easy to do. Um, so we're going to walk through kind of some of those steps just real quick and just show you how simple it is and how you can fix your rope on the trail if you ever need a trail repair or uh, you want to make your own winch line extensions or whatever. But then you can see just how simple of a process this is. So first and foremost, before we get into anything with synthetic ropes or steel cables or anything, the number Number one recovery tool to have and he's like, well, we can do is gloves. You should have a good pair of gloves that fit your hands, that you're comfortable with. And also, you can kind of feel like you're in Yellowstone. <laughs> Yelling at your pal Jimmy. Hope some one of you guys out there knows a guy named Jimmy. So right from here, we're gonna go put the winch in a free spool. Okay. 
Um, so this knife right here is actually called a myurchin. Okay, so a myurchin is used by sailors offshore uh, to cut mooring line. So one of my best friends is a merchant marine tugboat captain. So these are the knives that they use to cut mooring line and that type of thing. Sweet. It's got a sheep's foot on the other end, thumb grip for pressure to go through there, and then um, really easy to sharpen these things to cut through those dense fibers. This right here is called a marlin spike, right? So a marlin spike is used to pry knots out of rope and be able to get rope loose if it gets knotted up or to get through this. So what we start with here is that most winch manufacturers, now what they do is they do uh, they do a splice that's called a Brummel lock. What happens is it, a Brummel lock locks this eye so the tail uh, that's buried down in between here, right? You can feel where it tapers off and the tail is buried down inside of itself. The Brummel lock locks this eyelid because it bites down onto the line in between here. Now what they do that is because when you do a Brummel lock, you don't need as much rope buried down in the center to provide uh, breaking strength. But it does, it, it's anywhere from 10 to 15% weaker than just a traditional deep berry splice. So we'll kind of walk through the next steps of this. So if you're gonna take this where you have an eye of a rope that's like this and you wanna get this out, you wanna save as much of the rope as possible. So what you can do is you can either take a marlin spike or the end of our fid needle, which I'll show you here shortly of what that looks like, and go through here to pull the tail of the rope out of this. So you see right there, right? I got right underneath of that fiber where that yep. tail was going in. Well, it just slides right off, huh? No way. Wow. And there it is. So the tail is just right out of there, right? So that's buried down inside of itself. And then you can just pull the tail right out of the inside. Now the next step, because we want to save as much of the rope as possible, right? So we're going to have a little audience participation. You want to grab the end of that hook right there? The hook? Yep, just hold on the hook right there. That's what I was saying. There it is. Now we got rid of that, right? We saved as much rope as possible. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where it goes. <laughs> Heavy, bulky, not rad. Yeah. Right? Probably sell it to somebody yeah. to make a, like a beer. Did you see that guy with the huge game? That's where it just came from. Clip it right in. Just boom. Yeah. Perfect, right? Now what we did is like uh, the end of this. So you see on the end of this, on the end of this thing, this is a this is a thimble, right? This thimble is literally on the end of the line here to provide a minimum bend radius to retain the, the breaking strength of the rope. Mm -hmm. um, so most people will say that that bend radius needs to be six to eight times the diameter, right? That's the bend radius that should be on there, but that's really not accurate. It actually only needs to be just over one to one in order to retain the full breaking strength of the rope. So what we're gonna do, because we no longer need this thimble, or we'll have this on the end of the line here, because now we're gonna resplice the end of this, we are gonna use and put on one of our synthetic rope spools. This, this synthetic rope spool gives you a little bit bigger of a diameter than just the pin of our winch line shackle. So now we'll show you kind of how this is gonna work and how that's gonna install on there. So, so this right here, this is our fast fit. We released this tool um, just over five years ago. Um, there are other traditional types of fids out there. Uh, you can even do this, what I'm gonna show you here with a big paint and pen and some tape. I mean, that's really even possible, but this makes it to where it's just one tool. There's no other additional things that you need to put this together in order to splice the end of synthetic winch line. It comes in this little pouch. Even the pouch is USA made. On the fid needle right here, you'll have, uh, you, you have a measuring tool, and then you also have the diameter of the rope and how deep of a tail that you should long bury uh, the splice. So if you're gonna do like a deep bury splice here, three eighths diameter line, which is this, should be buried 20 to 27 inches down the rope. So you saw what we just removed. I mean, how much was there? 10 inches, right? So it should be almost three times that length buried down the inside. 10 inches? Yeah. Five feet. 
10 inches. 10 inches. 10. This is 10, right? That's 10 about inches. 10, right? This is what 10 looks like. Depends on the height. I think that's about 10. And yeah, that's normal. My wife, <laughs> thinks, my wife thinks it's 10. <laughs> so the easiest thing to kind of consider that is, that is that with this tool, it should be three fid lengths, right? So that's the kind of thing to think about. Yeah, so the tool comes in the pouch. It comes in two pieces. You just take the end of this right here and thread that end on. Now you've got the wire basket attached to the end of this. You come to the end of the winch line here. You expand this open. You open up the end of the wire basket. You grab down onto the end of the rope. And so it expands over and then bites down on the end there. So it's like a Chinese finger trap. So once you measure the berry length for how deep that you're gonna gonna go down in through here. One but of the I things I like to do bumper. is come down here and just make a little bunch in the line so I know that's how far I gotta get the tail down to go through the line. So then when I come back up here, I know that that's how far I'm gonna bury this tail. So I come through here, I push this together to open up and expose the hollow core, the end of the line, right? You're gonna be careful to take the fid needle and go right through the middle section of that yeah, rope. I mean, I go, I wanna, pierces the line, goes right through, and instantly we're already putting a loop back in the end of the rope. I was talking to right? From this point, we'll come back down and just go like a few strands down past that. Again, pushing that together, exposing the hollow core, taking the fid needle and working it through the rope, piercing that through a second time which will start to create kind of like a little bit of a lock stitch like in the end of this right mm -hmm. so this goes through here and we'll start to bite down on that line now at this point because we still have good access to the tail what we'll do now we will take our synthetic rope spool i got you we did the one we're gonna the synthetic rope spool now will go sit in that eyelet and it will act as the thimble in the end of the line here so then you just cinch the eyelet up because we have access to that tail, right? So we cinch the eyelet up and tighten that around. So now we're just splicing this onto the end of the line, right? So again, made the loop, went back through, and now we're just gonna take the tail and bury it all the way down through the middle section. So just like piercing the line goes, you come back over here, push this together to expose the hollow core or the inside of the line. So it wouldn't go into here. I floated gears all the way Oh, yeah. And then you start to bury the needle right down the set the center section, okay? So we see what that looks like, right? Mm -hmm. It's going right down through the middle there. So then you just continue to work the fid needle down the center section of the inside of the rope. They let it sit on the friggin' clutch plate and bit the disc. So I got a new disc. I had to pay for it. They stripped out the bolts. I had to buy a new fly. You continue to push and expand, push and expand, right? And you can see, like, I'm, that's where that little bump is that I made in the line to know how far the tail's got to go down. So I'm going to get all the way to that point. Mm -hmm. Shifting drive perfect. So not only did they charge me, all of them. Let the fid needle come out the side, right? So we got the tail going all the way through there. They said it would natural. They said I got a back clutch. And then they said they couldn't get the bleed. Jeeps are one of the hardest clutches to bleed. Which Pull that rope all the way through there. But whenever I have another guy, I'll put the clutch pad on and rotate it. So that's your problem. Now at this point, now you got the tail going all through it, through the the inside of this, mm -hmm. right? Take the tool off. <laughs> we go back to our trusty my urchin, and then what we're going to do is we're going to taper the in, the the inside of this line. So. Uh, it's re there's all kinds of different methods, right? To go, oh, I need to go two strands up and do this whole thing. And like, look, man, we've we've done a, we've done a bunch of testing and, and destructive testing. You can check out on our YouTube channel. And the reality is, it just needs some type of transition and taper, so there's no step up in the line. Because even if you blunt tapered the end of the line here, so that it was just a stop, that's where the line would break because it has a step transition. So you just wanted there to be some type of smooth transition that goes through there. I went against your recommendation. Then I understand. You're like, hey man, I put my part on my own sub part. Your own soft shackles. You can make your own winch line extensions, right? I mean, it's just like anything. It's like any other tool. Okay. Oh, missing a finger. Whoa. <laughs> those, yep, all three of those right there. So we're going to put the Hold it so? Yep. We're going to cheat out just a little bit and we'll go right here. Yeah. Okay. 
So you see now we got this little bit of step down in between here. So we got a, we got a smoother transition mm -hmm. to allow that to collapse down once this gets buried into itself. So put our knife back down. Then we take the end of the eye right here. Good. And then you literally just put it right back down inside of itself. And that's it. That's just literally how simple it is in order to get that thing put back together. So it's that easy to splice your rope. So it's the same thing as like if the rope were to break in the middle, you could take the two ends and take one tail and bury it down the center and bury it down the center and put the line back together. Right? Oh, cool. Our ultra hook. So again, like we were talking about before, where you had that hook bouncing up in between here and damaging the fairlead surface, this hook right here has got integrated rubber pads, EPDM rubber pads. So there's gonna be no metal to metal connection on, on the front of your fairlead anymore. This will come in and lay flat. So it's gonna retain your approach angle. And it's also gonna allow to have the rope completely protected behind the fairlead surface until you're ready to use that again. Now, again, you gotta change the fairlead out and do that kind of stuff. But we're also gonna give you um, our uh, rope guard, which is right here. And with the rope guard, what this does is once you remove two of the rubber pads, the rope guard will use aluminum driver if it's to stick on between here. So now the rope guard acts as a skid plate. So it's fully protecting the eyelet and the end of the winch line, allowing it to be stored safely. And this will act as a, like a skid plate, not only for protecting the hook, but also protecting the fairly in the whole front of the car and the rope until you're ready to absolutely use it. And the neat thing with the rope guards is, is that once those aluminum rivets go into these pre-existing holes, once that's installed there, you can beat this up and hit it in the rocks and do all the stuff with it and just drill those rivets out and replace these as necessary so you can constantly like refresh and keep the parts looking clean if that's important to you if not personally i like to say tools not jewels right mm -hmm. so and this stuff is here to do work and to do recovery and do that kind of thing so uh the ultra hook this thing is uh we got it rated at 16,000 pounds it's got a working load limit of 16,000 pounds. It has an ultimate failure on the hook throat opening at over 32,000 pounds and the shackle tab brakes at over 48,000 pounds. Um, it's, a, it's all made out of 7075 USA made Kaiser billet, a uh, billet machine air shop there in Boise, Idaho. And then it also has a titanium double shear pin that's holding that into place. And they install just this easy. So you come through here, right? Got snap ring pliers. This goes down in here you grab the end of the snap ring. Right? Pin slides out. Rope goes in. Pin goes back in place. Take your snap ring, it goes right back down in the in the hole. And then there's a machine groove that's on the inside of this. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you squeeze that, put that into place. Uh, then you can even take the one end of the snap ring and just pull it around to make sure that it's seated uh, inside the groove there. Okay, so now you see that the rope spool is in place in between there. You now no longer have that metal thimble. So as you're sucking it into the fairlead surface, you don't have to worry about this gouging the fairlead surface in between there. You got the larger uh, bend radius around this to provide the full breaking strength of the winch rope, right? And it's all gonna suck in neat and tight right up against the fairlead surface. Now we gotta charge your battery. Yeah, now we're gonna have to jumpstart the truck to, uh, <laughs> to finish that out, but that's all right. <laughs> Okay, so very important, right, when your winch line is going in, what you want to do is you never want the rope to just to slide through your hands. You want to go hand over hand and allow the rope, or you kind of lean it back and put some tension onto it to allow that to go through there. But that way, I mean, you can even see just how dirty your gloves get just from handling this rope. So you never want that to slide through there because you may never know, did it pick up sharp rocks? If you're out in the desert, like in Baja, and had to winch something out, like does it have cactus thorns? Just anything that could be in there that could cut your hand. So by doing this, it allows you to grip and put it in and do that. So it's simply just to look like this. Ready? Yep. It allows you a slow, controlled movement to also watch the rope stacking up on the drum. That way you can give it yourself a chance to like stack up there evenly and neatly on the drum. Bump it one more time. There you go. That looks great. Clean, simple, easy, the world's safest winch hook. Awesome. Nicely done, man. Awesome. Good. Yeah. All 
And uh, once I get once I get longer hardware, we're going to be putting on their fair lead, but I need a little bit longer hardware before we can do it. So we're going to get rid of that Smitty built fair lead that's all trashed, and they got us a nice one. Um, and I'll show you guys how that goes in a bit. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a much, much better setup. And not only is it safer, but it's also a lot quieter. When you're wheeling with that big hook flapping around, it just makes all sorts of noise and distracts you. Oh, yeah, and uh, this is uh, really, really nice. So yeah, thanks thanks to Justin for giving us the uh, the rundown on that. I really appreciate it. Like you're going to get in the rocks. It just depends on how you're going to use it. Like Oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah. You got more things. You got more things. So last but not least, right? Because we know your history with uh, <laughs> towing of vehicles. Or being, oh, Maxident? Oh, I like it's that. It's called the uh -huh. a... So this dude's like, hang on, didn't you have a hitch ball shoot into your truck? And I was like, that's where you recognize me from? Great. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie. That's how it goes. So what we're going to do, so we, this is one of our hitch receiver shackle mounts. This is our hitch link. So now you'll have a dedicated rear recovery point for the back. Uh, we machine this radius on the pin attachment hole of this. So that way you can use a soft shackle or a hard shackle in between here. And it will also give you this two recess to go through here. Uh, this is also our quick release hitch pin. We do make a locking and quick release hitch pin uh, that are USA made and that are also pull tested up to 33,000 pounds. So nothing really any different than most other hitch pins. It's just the fact that this is an American made one and they're really kind of priced the same. So why would, why would you buy from overseas when you can buy American, right? And go with that. So yeah. now, now you're gonna have this thing be able to go right through here. It's gonna match the front of the truck as well, right? So simple installation, it simply goes right inside of here, right? And then because of the bumper, we gotta play a little bit again. Oh, we gotta find the hole, yeah. giggity. <laughs> Slide that thing right through there. Get the cotter pin right on and you're all good to go. Now you have a dedicated anchor point for the rear of the vehicle. This marks the end of the 2022 Northwest Overland Rally. I had a super good time, met a lot of awesome people. I say this every time I do this. When I'm doing YouTube, it can kind of become just a numbers game. It becomes easy to forget that there's real people behind the screens watching and enjoying the content and genuinely getting inspired and excited about the stuff that I'm doing. And I forget about that. Uh, I just sort of put this stuff out and I try not to think about it because if I think about it too much, it becomes hard to do. Getting feedback from you guys at shows like this, uh, it means so much to me. It's super humbling and exciting for me to, uh, to have people who are genuinely excited to, to see our stuff and see what I'm doing. And, and so thank you so much to every one of you guys who came up and said hi. I had a great time. I met with a lot of cool people. I met with some owners of these awesome, iconic companies. I got to talk business with them, which is just, it's just where my head's at. It's what I love. I even got to fly my paramotor. And a uh, huge shout out to the admins of the Northwest Overland Rally for not making a big stink about the, the paramotor. They were very accommodating, very cool. It was just a matter of uh, they didn't have insurance for, or permissions for that type of thing, which I totally understand. It's okay, we had a good time, it was fun. I'm gonna go ahead and load up the third gen Tacoma. And while everyone is looking forward to going home, I'm looking forward to going to CBI Off-Road Fab's headquarters to get this Tundra built. It's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the Northwest Overland Rally and everything that it has to offer. And uh, if you missed out here, make sure you come to one of our group runs with the Overland Truck Store. There's going to be one in July. All right, bye.
ready for the next trip, the next adventure, next destination. I'll probably camp on the, uh, on the tent on the trailer tonight because I'm just going to be driving. I got 11 hours to drive. And when you're towing, it's more like 12, 13 hours. So I got to do that today. Got to put in about that 11 hour drive CBI in the morning. And we're going to first thing, cut this bumper off. All this junk that was wrecked recently, we're going to cut all that off. And it's going to seriously improve the look of this Tundra. I mean, there's not, I'm not alone in the fact that I think that this bumper and grill is kind of a lot. When you put that CBI off-road fat bumper on there, it, it just starts to fill in some of the, uh, I guess not even fill in, it gets to cut out some of the mass, the girth. We get to remove a lot of that and increase our um, approach angles. It's gonna be a lot better. But what's gonna be weird about this is the first time I've ever put bumpers and sliders and racks and all that stuff on a truck when I haven't got the suspension wheels and tires done first. It's gonna look goofy, fair warning. I'm gonna be that guy, but uh, when it's done, it'll look amazing.